We're live. Welcome to the 2020 Ham Exposition New England Aries Academy's webinar series. I'm Steve, WA1EYF, located in Amherst, New Hampshire, the producer of today's session. Your presenters today will be John, K1UAF, and Marsha, KW1U. John is the section manager for New Hampshire. Marsha is a section traffic manager for both the Western Mass and Eastern Mass sections. Both have extensive experience in handling messages and running traffic nets. Their topic today will be message forms handling, the fourth part of the ARIES training basic track. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them in the Q&A box at the bottom or top of your Zoom screen. We'll try to address the questions after, all the after the presentation has been completed so as not to disrupt the flow. Please note that the chat feature is disabled for this presentation. Thank you for attending. It's all yours, John and Marcia. Thank you, Steve. Uh, good evening, all in attendance. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, we'll uh, hopefully make this a, a, an informative uh, session for those uh, relatively inexperienced with traffic handling, message handling, uh, and a, a refresher for those that may have had some experience. Uh, so let's uh, let's get started. What what is uh, message handling? Next. There we go. Um, emergency communications is message handling. When when you're uh, operating uh, during an incident. Uh, people need information that you have or uh, you need information that other people have and uh, they, they get it to you via a message. There's uh, two types of messages, uh, tactical messages and formal messages. Tactical messages are usually verbal, uh, brief, um, uh, typical, typical type of tactical message is a situation report. Um, and it's usually be between the two people, the one person that has the information and the other person that needs the information. In, in other words, there, there isn't any forwarding or relays involved. The, the two people get, uh, you know, get the information from where it is to where it needs to be or get a question, an answer to a question. Um, right then and there. Uh, there's no need to, to repeat the message to somebody else and then get the answer and, and send it back uh, through uh, two or more steps. Then we have formal messages which are, which are written. Uh, they're in a, generally in a defined format. Uh, they include tracking information so you can tell uh, the, the time and date and who, who handled the message and uh, you know who who you received it from, who you sent it to. Uh, it may involve uh, several relays or forwarding from from one station to another to another to get to its destination. And uh, they are generally retained for record uh, by the agency for reviewing after the incident, um, other uh, or, or maybe uh, used for training. Uh, uh, in, in future tr uh, training situations, they can go back and um, look at uh, things that worked well and other things that worked quite, uh, not quite so well and, and learn from that whole experience. Um, next slide. So um, I'd like to start with the ABCs of emergency communications, and those are accuracy, brevity and clarity. Uh, next slide. Accuracy is, is pretty obvious. The delivered message should be an exact copy, word for word, letter for letter, number for number, space for space of the original message that was sent. So uh, uh, Marcia sends a message to me. What, what I wrote right down as she's sending it uh, if we put the two pieces of paper side by side, they should, they should be an exact copy. Um, that's the whole idea. And uh, next slide. 
brevity. Uh, you're looking for a uh, a message that contains all the essential information, but without any unnecessary uh, uh, words or uh, anything that doesn't actually add to the meaning of the message or the or the uh, uh, the understanding of the message. Um, messages generally are not composed of grammatically complete sentences. They're usually phrases, and uh, so there you'll find not very not a lot of punctuation. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but it's important. Uh, part of the brevity is using standard procedural words, operational words, standard phonetic alphabet, so everybody is working from the same uh, set of tools, uh, which we will explain in a in a minute. Um, you'll you'll see me say no extraneous words uh, a lot, and that's part of that. You don't throw in extra words that are not necessary. So clarity, uh, there's cl you need a clear signal, uh, a properly tuned transmitter, um, properly tuned and uh, uh, receiver with appropriate filters for the mode being used. You need a clear speaking voice. You will you will be speaking at a speed that allows the receiving operator to easily copy um, what you're saying which is much slower than normal reading speed. So you have to be careful. That's one of the hardest things about transmitting a message by voice is um, uh, slowing down enough uh, so that you don't get ahead of the person that's, that's copying. And then uh, also clear language, meaning using common terms, no slang, no, no cue signals, uh, no jargon. Uh, served agencies may have their own uh, uh, fun abbreviations, but when when we when we're communicating uh, a formal message, we want to not include anything that wouldn't be understood by anybody that's involved in the incident. Um, now the, the the modes of transmit transmission uh, are involved here. So ju just quickly before be, um, before we get into the objective here, uh, on amateur circuits we can transmit a message by CW, voice, or various digital modes. But if you're at an agency site, um, you might, and, and depending on the nature of the incident and if uh, infrastructure is intact, you might also have phone, fax machine, uh, email, or a agency radios available. And as an emergency communicator, you want to use whatever's available to you uh, in in the in the best way. So, if there is a telephone available and you can uh, uh, get the message through by a phone call uh, directly, you m you might not even need to use the radio. Or if you can send a message, a, a written message by a fax machine directly to the to the other party that that needs to receive it, do that. But often, as amateur radio operators, we're volunteer auxiliary communicators. We're there because a lot of that stuff isn't working. Um, what we're talking about today is transmitting a message via a voice circuit over amateur radio frequencies. So I, I'm, even though all, all these other things might be available under different circumstances, our focus today is, is a voice message uh, using amateur radio circuits. So our objective is to present the, the common methods and practices that facilitate transmission of a properly formatted uh, formal message from point A to point B, such that it arrives exactly as written on the original copy. Um, and just restating what we said before. And the reference here, MPG, is the NTS Methods and Practices Guidelines 
which is available for from for download from the uh, ARRL. Uh, there's a list of references at the end, which we'll, we'll uh, go over. And uh, you, uh, but I'll I'll make uh, frequent reference to MB, MPG throughout uh, the evening. Uh, Marsha, anything to add? Uh, no. Um, people have wondered about that MPG because it's it's quite lengthy, but it's got so many examples. It's well indexed. And it's just really a reference, but it's a good reference. It's uh, based upon best practices that we have found over the years, uh, <clears throat> especially on HF, where you have a variety of uh, conditions, um, atmospheric and interference and whatnot. So uh, this is why we use the MPG as a reference. Yep. OK, great. Uh, so let's go on. Um, so uh, there's no wrong way to send a message as, as long as you know you keep the ABCs in mind, accuracy, brevity, clarity. But there is a better way, and uh, that's uh, explained uh, as do what the trained receiving operator expects, and confusion and errors will be minimized. Again, that's a, a direct quote from MPG. And I'll say it again, no extraneous words. Again, uh, a quote from MPG. That, that's the, the section in the page. If, if you read, uh, or if you, you go through chapters one and two of MPG, you'll know what you need to know to, to uh, transmit voice med messages. Uh, there's, but again, it, it's pretty in-depth, and it's not something you want to read end-to-end. <laughs> um, -end. You have a question, look it up, it's there. Uh, that's the best way to do it. Um, next slide. Um, so there's several uh, different forms we use. The most common is the ARRL radiogram, and that's what we'll focus on this evening. Um, there's, uh, when you're involved in a in an incident with a uh, with emergency management professional emergency management personnel, they'll probably be using the general message ICS 213 form, uh, and we'll talk about how to incorporate that into our messaging. And and then there's other agencies that will have may have their own forms. Uh, hospitals may have their own forms. Uh, Red Cross has their forms, so uh, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of at the end I'll, I'll show how how you can easily incorporate any of any other forms into this um, standard methods and practices system that we'll be explaining this evening. Uh, go ahead. So uh, we're going to start talking about the radiogram. Um, the radiogram format is made up of four different parts. You have a preamble, an address, the text, and the signature. Um, and I think the next one is a sample radiogram that we can look at to get an idea. This is the ARRL radiogram form. You can down, download load them uh, from the uh, download an image from the uh, a PDF from the uh, ARRL website, um, or you can buy pads of them, if, uh, $2 for 50 sheets. Uh, and it's, uh, uh, it, I think that's, at least on my screen, that's just about full, full size. So it's, uh, uh, so th this is uh, one I used for an exercise a, a while back, but it, I thought it would work okay tonight. Um, it's, it's a request from a shelter for uh, more supplies, um, and, and it's going to the, to the Red Cross office to, uh, to get that, those supplies. Um, so we'll break it down. Uh, uh, the next slide shows just the preamble. In the preamble, you have the message number, precedence, handling instructions, 
station of origin, check, place of origin, time file, and date. The handling instructions is optional. The time filed is optional in general, but I would suggest that in an emergency situation, you, you want to have the time in there. Uh, so w while it's uh, uh, optional for routine messages during an emergency or a, an incident where you're activated, uh, I, would, I would consider time filed uh, required. The, the message number is assigned by the originating station and never changes. That's like the index to, to find uh, that file, that, that, that radiogram in the system. Um, and the best way to do it uh, is just sequentially. Don't, don't, don't come up with some fancy numbering system that includes the, the, the day of the month and the phase of the moon. Um, just you know, start with message number one and, and just keep going. Um, and probably uh, f they, at the beginning of an incident, you would want to start with number one and keep a log of, of your message numbers, um, uh, who, who it was received from and or sent to, and just, just a, uh, and, and the message number in, in the station of origin and, and maybe the priority. Um, the precedence uh, indicates uh, the, uh, the importance of the message. The least important is routine, abbreviated with an R. Welfare is sort of a health and welfare message, uh, sort of the next level of importance uh, up, uh, where either uh, people in the affected area are trying to get a message to family and friends outside of the area to let them know their status, or people from the outside are inquiring about uh, affected family or friends that might be uh, affected by the incident. Priority is urgent uh, information, but not of a, of a life-threatening uh, nature. And uh, uh, welfare is abbreviated with a W. Priority is abbreviated with a P. And emergency is, is uh, you know, uh, extreme, uh, life-threatening or extreme uh, damage uh, is, is imminent, and this message has to be handled immediately. And you always spell that out. That is never abbreviated. Uh, station of origin is the, the call sign of the station that first puts the message into the system. Um, there's various definitions of that, but probably the one that, that is the best to, to guide by is who first lists that message uh, for transmission. It's not um, it's w w when it's uh, ready to be sent. Um, the check is the group count of the text of the message, the, the text portion, and we'll, we'll look at that in a minute. The place of origin, in generally, uh, you know, a regular routine radiogram uh, on the amateur circuit, it's the city and state. But during an incident, you may have, you know, 10 or 15 different stations within a city and saying Concord, New Hampshire doesn't mean anything. But if you say uh, Red Cross uh, operations or Main Street Shelter or uh, uh, Concord EOC or New Hampshire State EOC, you'll know where in the city of Concord uh, that message came from. So it. it Typically, it, it would be your tactical call sign uh, during an emergency. N not necessarily, but that, that is a good guideline to go by. Time filed, you should use 24-hour time. The default for a radiogram is uh, UTC, uh, but you might want to use local time. 
I would still put in the, the full abbreviation for the time zone, either Eastern Daylight Time or Eastern Standard Time, just so that if you say local, um, you know, with an L, uh, whose local time are you talking about? Um, it, it's just, uh, again, uh, accuracy and clarity. Be explicit with uh, what time zone you are in. And the, the date is month and day. Um, again, for, for emergency, you know, for an incident, you might want to write, uh, because these will be kept as records, you might want to put the date, uh, the, the year above there, just so when it's filed, they'll know the year. But over the air, you just give the, uh, the month and day. Um, anything else we should say about the preamble, Marsha? Uh, you didn't handle the uh, cop, uh, the handling instruction? That's the next slide. Okay. All right. Uh, no, I think that covers it. Okay. So let's go to handling instructions because that's, that's a little more involved. Um, these are the uh, standard handling instructions. They're, they're giving basically instructions to the uh, uh, delivering station uh, how to handle it. The ones to pay attention to here are HXC, which is to report date and time of delivery back to the originating station. HXD reports to the originating station the identity of station from which received plus date time and method of delivery, so a little more detailed than C and HXE. Um, delivering station get reply from address E, originate message back. So even though the, the text of the message may ask for a reply, if you put uh, HXE as the handling instruction, it, it, it just adds a little, it, a little reminder to the delivering station to get a reply message to send back to the originator. The others are more for routine messages, and uh, I don't think you would cancel the. I don't think you'd ever use HXB uh, to cancel a message <laughs> during uh, during an incident. Um, so the the C, D, and E are the ones that you might uh, want to use during an incident. And let's go to the address. Address is pretty self-explanatory. Basically, you want to include enough information so that uh, the delivering station can get it to the person and place, to the person at the place they are. Um, uh, the, so uh, a complete street address, um, uh, phone number, fax number, email, you know, whatever you have available uh, to make sure that that message gets delivered. There's also some, something known as an uh, operator note. And uh, an address op note uh, just includes additional delivery information uh, that will help that person get that message to the, to the right uh, addressee. And the text is next. Um, the, you'll notice that the radiogram form has uh, 25 spaces for, for words or characters. Uh, that's a recommendation, not, not a requirement. Uh, most routine messages you can usually condense down to 25 words or less. They used to have contests back in the 50s and 60s. Uh, in 25 words or less, please whatever, and then you'd win a prize. Um, uh, they're divided into five words per line, so you can uh, easily count up the number of words. And, uh, but again, if, if, it, if a message requires more words, again, keeping AB, your accuracy, brevity, and clarity in mind, um, do it. You don't want to skimp just because you only have 25 blanks. And you don't have to use this form. You can do the same thing on a, on a lined piece of paper, even a blank piece of paper. But uh, at least when you're starting out, the form is real handy 
because everything is there for you to fill in. And then the signature. Uh, the signature is the person who generated the message, not necessarily you as the radio operator. Um, and it, it, for a, 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 uh, during an incident, you'll want the signature to be someone who has the authority uh, to send that type of message. In this case, it's a request for resources, so it should be somebody who has that authority. So in this case, the, the manager of that shelter uh, would certainly have the authority to request uh, more uh, supplies for the shelter. Uh, as a radio operator, you probably would not have the authority to request uh, those materials, so you should not sign it. Okay, um, let's see, I think we're going to talk now talk about the, the methods of actually sending this message. So we're going to get into the, uh, the uh, MPG methods and practices guidelines. To send a message, we have a number of tools. We have a character set. Uh, we always use the standard ITU phonetic alphabet. Uh, lots of people have their own uh, sort of phonetics that they like to use, but during an incident and, and actually anywhere in uh, when sending a formal message, you should uh, always use the ITU standard phonetic alphabet. Um, we have procedural words, operational words, introductory words. So other than what's in the message itself, you should only be using procedure, the, the defined procedural words, operational words, introdu introductory words. No, uh, I'll say it again, no extraneous words. And uh, the same quote from MPG, do what the trained receiving operator expects and confusion and errors will be minimized. So let's look at the details of some of these tools. The, our character set is 26 letters a through Z, uppercase only, no lowercase, no special characters, no emojis. Um, we have the ten numerals, z zero through nine, and we have the slash character, which is the only punctuation uh, provided for in a radiogram. And this, this primarily goes back to CW, the original uh, amateur radio uh, mode of transmitting messages, uh, where it might not in a in a local emergency in a, in a a widespread incident, uh, these messages m may spend some time on a CW net. So you got it, where you may not be sending it uh, via CW, some a relay station may be. Uh, to get it further out of the area, across country, or at least, you know, into a, a different uh, different area of the country. And then we have a space, which, when we're talking, is a is a pause, uh, and there are different length pauses for different uh, needs. Uh, so let's uh, let's go to pro words. Uh, three basic pro words. The word number is the beginning of the message, and right after you say the word number, you say the message number, which is the, the first block in the preamble. It's important, uh, though, to understand that we're not saying the name of the block. We're, we're using the pro word number to begin the message. Uh, all the other blocks in the preamble, we do not say the name when we're sending the message. Uh, the pro word break, uh, it, it marks the, the end of the address and the beginning of the text. So you go through the preamble, the address, break, that's, that's the signal to the receiving operator that he's now going to be receiving the actual text of the message, the important, well, all parts of the message are important, but this is the meat, this is the information 
that needs to be transmitted. Um, and then after the, at the end of the text, uh, break signifies the end of the break, and then after that comes the signature. So there's two breaks. Uh, the first break, beginning of the text, second break, end of the text, and then the signature. And then the, the single word end marks the end of the message after the signature. And if there's any signature op note, you say the word end. And that's, you don't have to say anything else. That's the signal for the receiving operator either to acknowledge receipt of the message or to ask for any other, if he missed a word or he doesn't understand something, he'll ask for it. And that's where you do that. After all of that, then you, uh, you can agree that the message was uh, sent successfully and accurately. Um, so along with pro words, we have some operational words. Um, book of and end book are the, the equivalent of number and end for a, a book message. We're not going to get into that, uh, but, th but they're here, so you, you uh, are, are aware of them. Uh, if, you, if you are going to spell a word, you'll say the word, and then say, I spell, and then spell it either uh, with letter spelling, but what's probably the better way is with uh, phonetic spelling. Uh, there's so many letters in the English alphabet that sound al alike, like A, K, J, and E, D, B, Z, um, and it's easy to get them mixed up. So phonetic spelling is always the best. I say again, there's two, there's two reasons to use that. If you, if you start to say a word or a group of characters and you make a mistake, you, you say, I say again, and start over from, from the beginning of that group. Uh, the other reason to use it is to uh, repeat the group you just said, just for clarity to make sure uh, it's it's understood by the receiving operator. After you say the word end, you might want to give the receiving operator uh, an indication that you either have two or more messages coming, only one more message or no more. It, um, if you have if you have like a stack of ten messages to all all going to the same place. You, you go through them, end more, end more, end more. When you when you have when you've done the next to the last one, you'd say end one more, and then you do the last one and you say no more. And the and the, and the guy on the other end says phew, <laughs> finally. Anyway, um, the the word over the 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 back and forth gets pretty. Uh, uh, there's a rhythm, and you don't usually have to say over to mean I'm done talking, it's now your turn, but occasionally it it, uh, it may be necessary and it just says, it, it just means what it usually means over to you. Um, the word Roger has one and only one meaning and that is I have received your message completely and accurately. It do, does not mean yes, it does not mean okay. It does not mean um, whatever other use people sometimes use the word for. Uh, it only means I have received the message completely and accurately. Um, so it is only used after the transmitting operator says end and you have all the information you need uh, so that your message looks exactly like his. Um, when, you're, when you're getting fills uh, to, for something you missed, don't use the word Roger because that means you've got everything you need and, and you may not at that point. So uh, you, you can say, uh, okay, go ahead, meaning I, I got what you just told me, uh, go on with Without, or, or ask another question, or ask for another film. 
Um, if you think you got something right, uh, but you're not sure, you can say confirm word after uh, all is uh, data. I spell delta alpha tango alpha. And then he'll either say uh, confirm, meaning yes, you got that right, or he'll, or he'll say negative, it, uh, and then he'll give you what it should be. Um, so that's handy. If you think you, you got it right, but you're not sure, it's the way to ask, ask the question, did I get it right? Affirmative means yes, negative means no. Um, it's much better to use those words because they're a little more distinctive uh, rather than yes or no or okay. Um, and, and again, Roger does not mean affirmative. It means received. Uh, affirmative means yes. And uh, go, go ahead. I, we've already talk, talked about that. Um, let's go to uh, introductory words. Uh, yeah, introductory words. Um, when there's three kinds of groups in a message, there are pronounceable words, just a regular word. There are groups of numbers, and then there's mixed characters that could be. Uh, a combination of letters and numbers and the slash character. Uh, in that case, it's a mixed group. If you're transmitting a word, a pronounceable word, you say the word. If there's any question about how that word is spelled, uh, seemingly simple words like for, it could be F-O-R, it could be F-O-U-R, it could be F-O-R-E. So even though it's a very simple word, you would probably want to spell that. So you would say for, and then say I spell Foxtrot Oscar Romeo to indicate that um, that's the for that you're talking about. Generally, any person's name um, town names, city uh, city names, uh, anything that isn't immediately obvious, you should always spell, uh, even if it's a pronounceable word. Um, if it's not a pronounceable word, it's either figures, uh, a, a group of numbers, or it's a mixed group. So those types of groups always have to be introduced. So you introduce a group of numbers with the word figure if it's a single number, or figures if it's two or more numbers, but only numbers. So uh, an address, uh, 123 Main Street, would be figures 1, 2, 3, and then Main Street. Um, and you always, in any, any introduced group, you always send a, a character at a time. Uh, so you always say figures 1, 2, 3, not figures, figures 123 or uh, what's today, October 20th. Uh, you, you don't say October 20, you say October 2, 0, or uh, figures 2, 0. Um, so again, any mixed group must be introduced. If it's numbers, you introduce it with figure or figures. If it's a group of letters that is not pronounceable, or an abbreviation, you would introduce it as an initial if it's a single, a single letter, or initials if it's a group of letters, or uh, uh, also acceptable is, is letter group for a group of letters. If it's not just figures or just letters, then it's a mixed group. And you introduce that as mixed group. If, it, if the first character in that group is a letter, you introduce it as uh, a, a mixed group figures, figure or fig, if mixed group figure if it begins with a single letter and then has a, um, a slash or letters after that, uh, or 
mixed group figures if it's two or begins with two or more figures. So if I was giving somebody a frequency, um, I would say m mixed group figure, or let's say a, a, a time, a, a time in UTC. So mixed group figures uh, two one zero zero uniform tango Charlie. Uh, that would be a mixed group figures. Um, again, any mixed group is given is is transmitted one character at a time. Any letters in that uh, mixed group are uh, voiced as phonetics. Uh, and then there's three common types, special types of mixed groups. An amateur call, um, you could it, it it is a mixed group, so you could always introduce it as a mixed group, but they're so common in, in normal um, amateur, amateur radio messages that amateur call is a special type of mixed group. So you'd say amateur call, Kilo Whiskey, one uniform. Um, email addresses uh, you can introduce as a special type of mixed group. The problem is uh, the, the, the dot or the period um, is not one of our characters, so we have we have to say uh, say the word dot delta Oscar tango. Um, it, so if the email address is in the text, it, you have the first part, then the dot written out as a word dot, which which is is a group in uh, in itself and adds to the word count. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, then the next part of the email address, uh, at sign. You have to say at sign, and that that takes a word. And then, um, you know, Yahoo dot another word com or Charlie Oscar Mike. So, uh, internet ad address is the same way with the uh, with the dots and the. Um, in the in the uh, uh, any other characters, there might be some uh, colons and slashes if you do the whole HTTP colon slash slash stuff. Um, anyway, that's uh, the important thing is that the only thing you just say is is a is a pronounceable word. Everything else has to be introduced, and it's done one character at a time. Uh, phonetics for letters. Uh, anything you want to add, Marsha? Um, what? No, I'm 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 muted now. Um, I think uh, yeah, you covered it. Okay. Um, w one thing uh, we I should say here uh, we 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 don't use periods, and I said before that we don't make complete sentences. But if we want to separate a thought. That, that is important to the meaning of the message, we would use the letter X. Um, so, uh, and you you see that in the uh, in the sample message we're going to do shortly. Um, so it uh, uh, you would you would insert you would you would get to the end of one phrase. And then if, if you, it was sort of changing gears and you want to make sure it, and nobody got confused, you'd say initial x-ray, because it, it, it's, it's not a pronounceable word. Um, it's a single letter, so it's an initial, uh, and you use the phonetic x-ray for the letter x. Um, so you'll see x-rays or letter x's on, on, on their own uh, on their own line in the message, and that's that's what it's doing. It's it's a period uh, terminates a sentence, uh, but we use the letter X to uh, separate parts of the message because generally we're not using complete sentences. Okay, let's go on. I was just going to add too that uh, there's no need to put an X-ray at the end of a message. The break indicates that we're in, we're ending that thought. So yeah, generally, yeah, the 
the the X-ray should not be the last group in a message. In the text of the message, what I should have said. There we go. Okay, um, if we're going to get fills, uh, first thing you want to do is say what part of the message you need to fill in, in the preamble, the address, the text, or the signature. Because if you're looking for a, a, a call, say, uh, say again, the call sign, well, there's a call sign in the preamble. There's probably, they may, there may be one in the address. There, there might be a call sign referenced in the text. And there's probably one in the, there may be one in the signature. So say, in, in the address, uh, call sign of uh, address C. And that, then it's very clear to, to the uh, sending station exactly what you missed and what you need him to say again or her. Um, it, so it, generally in the text, uh, you'd, you'd want to know, it, uh, uh, you can ask for the word after uh, a word, you know, the next word after a word that you got, you missed the next one, so ask for the word after. Or uh, you could ask for the word before. And, and when you're deciding whether to do word after or word before, think of what's a unique word there um, that, that will identify exactly what I want. Uh, you can, if, if you got halfway through and then there was a lot of interference, you missed the second half of the message, you can say all after a, a given word. Or maybe you missed the first part, you can say all before. Um, or if you if you missed the if there's a gap in there you uh, a little burst of static or um, something you miss you don't know how many words you missed you can uh, list the word uh, before and after and say all between and then say the two words at the beginning and and the end of the gap that you need filled um, and that that tells pretty precisely uh, to the sending station what what you missed and what you need. And the sending station, uh, if you ask for uh, all between, they should give you uh, the, the, the last word you received properly, the words you missed, and then the next word that you received uh, correctly. So it, it book it bookmarks their information with with the beginning and ending of, that you gave them, um, and and we'll we'll try a little bit of that in in the uh, in the exercise that we're uh, that we're about to do. So I think we need to get Steve in here. We're going to do a little simulated uh, uh, traffic net and uh, transmitting a message. Oh, I for, oh I, I forgot to talk about ICS. Is that next? Yes. Oh, oh no, no th th that'll come at, at the end. It, it, scroll back up to the uh, sample message. Okay. All right. Uh, this is WA1EYF, net control for the New England Aries net. Check-ins, please. This is Kilo Whiskey One Uniform, Martian Conquer. No traffic. K1UAF, uh, uh, Main Street Shelter in Concord with traffic. A Nick Control acknowledges KW1U, no traffic. K1UAF with one message. Uh, please list your traffic. Uh, I have one for Red Cross Operations in Concord, New Hampshire. Okay, thank you. Uh, please call KW1U at uh, Red Cross headquarters with your and send your message. KW1U, K1UAF, how copy? This is KW1U, ready to copy. Uh, number seven, priority, Hotel X ray Echo, Kilo One, Uniform Alpha Foxtrot. One six Maine. I spell Mike Alpha India November Echo. 
initials Sierra Tango, shelter, mix group figures 1017, Echo Delta Tango, March 30, initial Echo, Leroy, I spell Lima, Echo, Romeo, Oscar, Yankee, shelter, coordinator, red cross of initials November Hotel, figure two, Maitland, I spell Mike Alpha India Tango Lima Alpha November Delta, initial Sierra Tango, Concord, New Hampshire, figures 03301, figures 603225667, fax, figures 603228, Seven one eight one. Break. Main. I spell Mike Alpha India November Echo. Street. Shelter. Needs. Cots. Blankets. Food. Four. I spell Foxtrot Oscar Romeo. Figures five zero new arrivals. Initial X ray. Please reply with initials Echo Tango Alpha. Break. Initial Lima. Burrows, I spell Bravo Uniform Romeo Romeo Oscar Whiskey Sierra, Manager, Main Street Shelter, End. No more. Confirm in fax number last four. Eight one seven one. Uh, negative. Uh, last four of fact figures seven one seven one. The word af in the text. The word after needs. Uh, word after please. Reply, I spell Romeo, Echo, Papa, Lima, Yankee. Uh, the word in the text after needs, a uh, November, Echo, Echo, Delta, oh, C. I'm sorry, uh, need, word after needs, cots, I spell Charlie, Oscar, Tango, Sierra. I have a check of... One five. Um, let's see, I'll give you the fifth word I have is cots. The tenth word is new. The fifteenth word is with. In the third line, say again. Third line. Arrival. Uh, okay. Third line. Arrivals. Initial x ray. Please reply with. Roger. Thank you. K1 UAF. Back to Nick. Hey, this is Nick Control. Uh, any other traffic? I'm here. 
the one you have nothing heard this has been a regular session of the New England Aries Net. The frequency is now returned to regular amateur use. WA1EYF out. Okay, so that was a quick, quick run through of how we would handle this message. Um, there, there's, I know there's a lot to absorb all at once. The best way to learn uh, traffic handling is to handle traffic. So uh, listen in on traffic nets. Um, uh, and uh, check in now and again. Um, uh, you're always welcome. Uh, don't don't take traffic if you're not confident. But after you listen for a while, you, you might might uh, offer to uh, receive a piece of traffic, or maybe even uh, generate a piece of traffic just to get the experience. Uh, you can send a happy birthday radiogram to to a friend or a relative, or just to say hi, how's it going, kind of a just keeping in touch message rather than a text or a, an email, send them a radiogram, just try it out, see how it, see, see how it goes. Okay, so let's uh, go back to that ICS-213 and, and we'll quickly uh, go through how to handle uh, other forms. Um, uh, here's the general message, ICS-213. It has a bunch of numbered blocks with names, and um, so uh, there's been a lot of discussion back and forth how to handle ICS-213 over amateur radio networks. The easiest way for me uh, to think about uh, do doing it easily is just the, the, entire, the entire form, after it's filled in, uh, is the text in a radiogram. Uh, you notice that you just have, have the, the two is just a name and a, um, a, an ICS position. Um, and you don't have complete address information. You don't have tracking information. So the radiogram gives you all of that, um, and then you just, uh, you're obviously going to be, uh, you'll probably be more than 25 words, so the check, you just say XX, or uh, two, uh, ICS 213 XX, meaning it's an ICS 213 text with uh, a number of words that's uh, too much for me to count. Um, so, uh, and, and you can do that with any form, with a, with a Red Cross form, with a hospital form. Just embed the entire uh, agency message, or, agency message form within the text portion of a radiogram. That, that makes it, gives you the tracking, it gives you a complete address, uh, a phone number, uh, all of that. You don't have, uh, you don't have to modify. In fact, mo if you change, if you add stuff to an ICS 213, it's no, no longer an ICS 213. It's some custom form that, that you've generated based on an ICS-213, but it's not an ICS-213. So just embed that whole form in your radiogram and the problem is solved. Um, any any uh, comments on that, Marcia? Uh, just uh, the important part is to have your header, like you mentioned, and your, your address. And I've seen this using the numbers in the text. Uh, for example, you uh, line two, and then you'd give the name and the position. Line three, and you give the name and the position. Line four, and you give the title of the subject, and so forth. Uh, that's uh, pretty much as I understand it. The thing is, they're still still discussing. Um, this is new to NTS. But we are, um, I think, tweaking it a little each time. So uh, <clears throat> this is a good start on it. This is how it's been handled so far. Uh, the, the bigger problem is our limited character set. Um, you know, anybody with a word, you know, with a word processor, you, you, you fill these things out. You have, uh, at a minimum, the 127 character ASCII character set, or even a 200, 
uh, uh, 55 character Unicode character set with all kinds of strange symbols in them. Um, and if we're going to uh, tran transmit our message with 100% accuracy, we have to be able to account for all of, uh, even just the uh, special punctuation, parentheses, brackets, um, uh, colons, semicolons, exclamation points, um, tabs, uh, if, if some data is in the message in, in columns. Um, it, there are ways to deal with that, but it, it's cumbersome. So if you can encourage your agencies to use caps only, I mean, just, just changing case, uh, uppercase, lowercase, is going to take some, some extra words in the message. Um, so uppercase only and, and limited punctuation and still get the message across, uh, that's to be encouraged. Not, you can't force it. You have to do it. You have to send the message exactly the way they give it to you. You can make suggestions, but you can't, uh, you can't change the message. John, it's a okay. little after 8.30. Why don't we uh, grab some of these Howdy. questions that are out there. Marsha, maybe you can bring the questions up. Uh, all right. How long should you keep the messages on file? My preference is there's no law about it, but I keep mine on file for a month. Uh, because I do sometimes uh, get somebody wanting to trace a message, what happened, maybe it got lost along the way or need to refer for it for some reason. So I always keep them for a month. Um, we have, uh, who, assign oh, who assigns the message number? Uh, that is, if you are the <laughs> amateur who is putting it first on the air, you assigned that message number. Uh, can HXC and HXF be used together? Absolutely. Um, what we generally do is have like HXCF, or it could be HXC forward slash F. But I've seen it just with the HXCF and that would work. Um, Dave says we don't recommend using handling instructions on Aries Net. Okay. Um, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, if you don't have an at sign character, how do you send an email address? That's a good question. We always spell it out at sign, A T S I G M. <clears throat> uh, is the term break used also as a way for receiving station to ask for a fill? Um, the break does give you an opportunity for the receiving station to ask for a fill. Uh, the break is given at the end of the address portion, and at that time, the station can uh, uh, request a fill. Uh, so the sending station should pause for a few seconds to allow the receiving stations to break in and ask for a fill. But if after pausing a few seconds, he doesn't hear anything, then he should just keep on going. <clears throat> and for the number nine, would you say niner? Yes, we do say niner. Five and nine sound very much alike, especially in poor conditions. So we use five and niner to distinguish between the two. Uh, for time, can the Zulu be used for UTCS? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> Are you going to address words at five to clarify word count? Oh, I see. When we were going through uh, the fifth word, when you're copying five words to a line, uh, that's an easy way to, uh, to find out where you're missing the count. Um, if your fifth word doesn't agree with the sending station, then you missed a word somewhere 
or you add a word somewhere. So this is why we do it. Usually five words to a line. So word five, word 10, 15, and so forth. Um, where is the MG, MPG on the website? Uh, if you go on the NRL website and type in keyword MPG, it should come up in Methods and Practices Guideline. And uh, John will have a, um, a list of uh, references uh, at the end. Yeah, if, if, if you scroll, down, if, if sc scroll the, the PowerPoint, it'll, it should show up. Right. Um, we're talking, write a message down when you're missing words. So how many, how do you know how many blanks um, do you have? Well, you would find out in the check for one thing. Um, the question was uh, um, when you're missing words, you never know how many you missed. That's why we would say um, all between. And you would give the, the last word you copied that before you missed some and then the first word you picked up again. So it'd be all between this word and that word. Uh, so that's how you would fill that in. And then of course, at the end, you wanna make sure that you have the same check in, that's in the preamble, so that you have the right number of words. Uh, why is five zero in figures and not as word 50? You can have figures five zero, or you can, if you say 50, the receiving station is going to write that out, F I F T Y. So it depends on how the uh, originator of the message wants to have that put. Um, we didn't mention, well, that's for NTS. Uh, if you have ARL numbered radiograms, that's the other thing that we didn't talk about, but there are. Uh, a number of ARL numbered radiograms, you can find those also on the ARL website. And if you're gonna put those in your text, one of those you wanna spell out the words, even though the words, if it was ARL 12, you wanna spell out ARL 12 <clears throat> and not just figures. Um, let's see. It would be more efficient at the receiving station called the sending station. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of pros and cons here. My rule of thumb, if you are uh, going off frequency, which we often do on HF and can do sometimes go to a different repeater, but especially on HF, when you are the receiving station, you're gonna pick the frequency that is clear for you. So you're the one that's going to be doing the calling. Uh, but on a net itself, I generally have the sending station call the receiving station. Um, you'll find a lot of discussion about this issue, but that's In my this case, it was net control. Uh, we were following net control's instructions. Yes, true. That uh, is correct. Did somebody say something? Yeah, I did. I, I'm net control, so I, I you did follow my instructions, and I just I set it up that way. But it could be the other way around. Okay. Uh, are repeat backs encouraged or discouraged for verbal communications? I'm not sure whether you're talking about repeat backs. Is it a whole message? Uh, generally, I think he's talking about a read back, which which is not done. Uh, it. It's sometimes it, it's done in uh, uh, aviation communications for a clearance. It's done in railroad communications for a, a track warrant. Um, it's often done in uh, some public service circumstances, but I, I've never seen it done on amateur radio circuits. I haven't either. Well, I think I may have once or twice in what 30, 40 years, but uh, it's rare. If you have really horrendous uh, uh, propagation, uh, you might want it as a really important message. But that's a possibility, but usually not. Um, should Main have been spelled out in the very last line? You said Main Streets Shelter. Uh, yes, I that. 
He did spell it out in the preamble. Uh, but you're talking about the very last line in the signature. Um, what do you think, John? Yes, I made a mistake. So, yes. I, I should have spelled it because it is, it is an uncommon spelling. Most people would think M-A-I-N, but this is the road to Maine, so it's M-A-I-N-E, and I should have spelled it. Uh, uh, I've heard full copy instead of Roger to acknowledge receipt. We don't encourage that. We try to be more standardized, uh, especially when you get on HF and you have bad conditions. Uh, we'd like to be rather consistent because we're relaying messages all over the country. So the standard really is Roger. Um, what do you put in the received and sent on the bottom? We didn't cover that, did we, John? Uh, no, it's uh, who, this, the, the call sign of the station you received the message from, the date and the time you received it. Oh, and or the date and time you sent it. Uh, that's that's for record keeping. So uh, you can uh, track. You know who you got it from. Uh, so if 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 somewhere the the link is broken, you can sort of find the last place it was and, and try to get it going again. Uh. Now, if you offer to receive, are you agreeing to deliver the message? What is the normal expectation or how is this done? There are three things they say you can do with a the message. There was a, 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 an old ham from Vermont. So she always said there were three things you could do with a message, but you can, uh, you can uh, relay it, you can deliver it, or you can service it back. You have to do one of those three things if you accept the message. And we didn't cover servicing back, but that might be for another another time that you want to make sure that you let the receiver know if a message was not deliverable. Um, let's see, how can you embed in the in verbal traffic? Um, again, how would you embed an IC213 in verbal traffic? Uh, you would just, I think, I don't quite understand what he's asking, but uh, you would still read it as the preamble, the address, and in the op note, you might say, this is an ICS-213. Uh, I've seen that done as an op note, that that's what's coming. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, we did the sample IC-213. Um, all right, the conversion of an IC to ICS-213 also, and this is what we've been doing in this Mars exercise, you can convert it to a radiogram. Basically what you're doing is taking the from line and moving it from before the text to, as, to the signature after the text. <clears throat> um, let's see. In your practice, you specified line three. Oh, yes. That's assuming five groups per line. Affirmative on that. What do you do if the word break is in the text of the message? Uh, well, I'm not sure that you would do anything. You would just, uh, you might say break, I spell. Uh, that indicate that it is a part of the text. I haven't seen that come up. <clears throat> is an email address considered one word? That's a good question. An email address, each part of that is one word. You may have, like my email might be kw1u at Comcast. kw1u would be a, a amateur call, Kilo Whiskey One Uniform, would be one word. And then we would have the at sign is another word and then Comcast and then dot is spelled D-O-T. So that's another word. And then 
net. So kw1u at sign comcast.net is really five words. Okay, I think that comes down now. Oh, teach me. <laughs> okay, um, I think that uh, pretty much covers it. I think that's just about it. Uh, John, any more comments before we close? Um, just to thank everybody for attending and, and asking some really good questions. Um, uh, uh, thank you. Okay, very good. Uh, this concludes this session of the 2020 Ham Exposition uh, New England Aries Academy webinar series. All sessions are available a few days after the live event on YouTube. Search for the New England Aries Academy. That's New England spelled out Aries Academy and you'll find it. Please remember to register for future ses sessions at hamexposition.org. 73 and thank you for attending. Oh, we forgot the references. Oh, what were we going to do that? Go ahead. Yeah, with the um, reference. Uh, that will be available, I assume, if you're going to have this online somewhere. Yes, this will all be available on YouTube. And at the end of the YouTube, you'll see the references uh, uh, this reference slide. OK. All right. Thank you for attending. And thank you, Steve, for all your help. You're welcome.